This lesson is part of my video course that teaches how to test Java with GUnit and Makita. You will find link to this course in the description of this video. In this video lesson, we will add GUnit 5 dependencies to our project. And to find GUnit 5 dependencies, I will bring a new browser window and I will go to mavenrepository.com. mavenrepository.com and hit enter. Using the search bar at the top, I will search for Jupyter and click on search button. And here's a list of GUnit 5 dependencies. For us to be able to use a GUnit 5 Jupyter, we can either add a few dependencies one by one, or we can add a single dependency that aggregates multiple dependencies in one. For example, to add dependencies one by one, I will need to add GUnit Jupyter API, which is the very first dependency in the list. I will click on it and then I will click maybe on the latest version. And under Maven tab here, we have Maven, Gradle and others. So under Maven tab, I will copy the XML code snippet and will paste it into my development environment right before the project element ends, I will create a new dependencies element and inside of this dependencies element, I will paste the new dependency. All right, now let's go back to our browser window and let's go back a couple of pages. The second dependency that I will need to add is called GUnit Jupyter Engine. And this is a number two dependency, GUnit Jupyter Engine. This dependency contains the implementation of a GUnit test engine and it allows us to run GUnit tests. So I will click on it and I will click on the latest version, copy its XML code snippet from the Maven tab and will also paste it into my POM XML file right under the GUnit Jupyter API dependency, like this. All right, now let's go back and again I will go back a couple of pages in history and optionally I might want to add GUnit Jupyter param dependency for example to support parameterized unit tests and this dependency is number four GUnit Jupyter params so I will click on it copy its XML code snippet and paste it into my POM XML file, like this. All right, so to make your project have the needed GUnit 5 libraries, you can add these dependencies one by one, or there is also one single aggregate dependency that contains all these three dependencies. So if you want to use a single larger dependency, then you can delete these three. So I will delete these three dependency, and I will go back into my browser window, go back a couple of pages and I'm looking for a dependency that is called GUnit Jupyter Aggregator and this dependency is number three. So if I click on it and then click on the latest version, I can copy its XML code snippet from the Maven tab. Now I will go back to my project and will paste this dependency inside of the dependencies element. All right, so this dependency will contain support for GUnit 5 API, for GUnit 5 engine, and also support for parameterized tests. And now that I have added my dependency, I'll need Maven to reload POMXML so that it can download these libraries and add them to my project. And to do that, I can either click on this button in the top right corner, it will load Maven changes, or I can select my project and then do right mouse click on it and then choose Maven and then click on reload project. And then if you expand external libraries, you will see the new GUnit 5 Jupyter libraries downloaded and added to your project. All right, so we have the needed libraries and we should already be able to execute our unit tests using our development environment. Let's have a quick demo. I will create a new demo test and I will run it. And to create a new unit test, I will select the Java folder under the test folder. 
I will do right mouse click on it and I will choose new Java class. I will give this class a name demo test and hit enter. It asks my permission to add this Java class to Git. I will click on add. And now that I have a class, I will add a little demo test method. In the following lectures, I will explain in details how to create test methods. But for now, I will skip the explanation and I will simply run this one just to demonstrate that we have successfully configured our GUnit 5 support for this project. So to run this test, I will click on this green play button, which will run the test. And I have green check marks in the test report and also next to the test method name, which means that our unit test was able to run and there are no issues. And this means that GUnit libraries that we have added do work. However, there is a one very useful plugin for automatically executing unit tests during the Maven build lifecycle. You will see this plugin used in many Java projects. So let's continue and in the following lecture, we will add this plugin to our pomxml file and we will see how it works. Now, in previous lesson, we've added the needed Maven dependency and we were able to execute our unit test using our development environment. However, it is not always that we need to execute unit tests using development environment. Sometimes we need our unit tests to be executed when we build our project using Maven. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So if I open a terminal window by clicking on this button, terminal, and list files to make sure that I'm in the right directory, I need to be able to see pom.xml file. So I'm in the home directory of my project. So if I want to build or package my project using Maven, I will run the following command, maven space package, and then hit enter. This will compile and package my project into a jar file. And now the build is successful, but notice that even though the build is successful, there are zero tests that were executed. Now I can also run maven command to execute test phase separately. Let's see if this works. So the command is maven space and then test and hit enter. And again, even though the build is successful, there are zero tests executed. So to enable our application execute unit tests during the maven build lifecycle, we need to add a plugin to pomxml file. So I will close terminal window and I will go back to pomxml file and right before the project element ends, so right after dependencies, I will add a new section that is called build, like this. And inside of this build section, I will add plugins section, like this. And inside of plugins section, I will add a plugin. The plugin is called Surefire. And you can look for it in the Maven repository as well. So I will go back to my browser window and I will open mavenrepository.com. Let's go to its homepage. So it's mavenrepository.com. And then using the search bar at the top, I will search for Maven Surefire plugin and click on search button. So the very first option at the top is what we need. Maven Surefire plugin. So I will click on it. I will select the latest version. And from the Maven tab, I will copy not the entire dependency, but it's Maven coordinates only. So I'll copy group ID, artifact ID, and version. I will copy it and will go back to my pomxml file and paste it here. Now, because I have made changes to my pomxml file, I will need to reload my Maven project so that Maven can fetch this dependency and make it available in my project. To do that, I will click on this button, which is in the top right corner, or just like I did in my previous video lesson, I can do right mouse click on my project or on pomxml file, and then choose Maven reload project. And now I should be able to execute my unit tests using Maven command as well. Let's try. I will open terminal window again. And in the terminal window, I will run maven space package. 
and hit enter. Now the build is successful and this time I have one unit test executed. I can also execute my unit tests by invoking the test phase. To do that I will use maven command maven space test and hit enter. And the build is successful again, and I have one unit test that was successfully executed. All right. And just in case you need to build or package your project, but you do not want unit tests to be executed, you can do it this way Maven and then space package dash capital D and then continue without any spaces Maven dot test dot skip equals true. This will package your project, but it will not execute any tests. Let's try. Now the build is successful, but there are no tests that were executed. All right, so it all works well and we're good to continue.